Every single player on this team has to be a different age. 20 players make up a roster, so we have to have 20 different years worth of players. Gonna be interesting. I was debating on using the in-game age, because that would just be easier to sort of visualize, but there are some cases where there will be a certain age in this game, and that's not really what they are. Also, when you start up franchise mode, I guess it depends on when their birthday is. That changes their age as well. Because if I recall correctly, I've done this video on old NHLs and that happened. I drafted like two players that were say, or no, sorry, I drafted a player that was 23 and 24. And then all of a sudden the 23 year old player was also 24. And I'm like, well, that is <laughs> not fair. You has deceived me. So I think I'm going to go based off of actual real age of when I'm drafting right now, which is May 12th. So I'm going to be looking up some birthdays and that will only happen probably for the last, I would say anywhere from seven to eight picks. Well, maybe not the last seven to eight because someone like Joe Thornton, I could probably take as my last pick and I don't think anyone's sharing his age. So let's go ahead and find out what team we're gonna be drafting for it is the Arizona Coyotes. What a cool logo. Owner mode is off. Fantasy draft is on. Jabronski will be turned off. Uh, these two are always kind of a toss up, but I'll leave them off. Well, that's not true. Fog of War, definite no. That is a hard no. Player morale is a maybe, but usually no. I've got a notepad over here with ages 18 to 43, so I'm ready to go. Hmm. Let's go with draft pick number 17. I feel like we're gonna have a bit of a later pick this time, and we... Do not. We're pick number 10. All right, I'll take it. Who do I want to start off this franchise? Well, it's not really a franchise because it is a one-year ordeal, but anyway. See, we got one already. According to this game, Tage is 22. According to the internet, it's 25. And we all know that the internet is never wrong. He also wears jersey number 72, so let's start off with Tage. Tajay to get this team rolling. So basically for this draft, if you doubt me for some reason, I don't know why, but anyway... Just in case, I'm going not based off of this age. I'm going based off of their real age and as of when I'm recording this, which is May 12th. So, if you want to look it up afterwards, be my guest. Here we go, TT. 1.4 million. What a contract. Over Chicken's 37. I want a first-line sniper. I was debating between him or Gensel, and it is a four overall drop-off. So, I think I got to go with my boy on this one. We're gonna do it. It's starting to look like this game is gonna be one year behind everybody, but Carlson is 33. And if I'm not mistaken, the last time I drafted him, Mans went off. He probably was playing with Victor Hedman though. Again, if my memory serves me correct. Anywho, another capital, sorry, John Carlson. I was debating between these three and Jari's the only one that has abilities. So we will be going with Tristan as our starting goaltender. 3.5 as well, you know. Not bad. All right, so here's a prime example where it looks like there's overlap, but there isn't. Jari was also born in 1995, but his birthday's in April. So he has turned 28, whereas Verhege has not. His birthday's later on in the year, so he's still 27. So he's eligible, and I will be taking him. This guy scores four goals in his return to the playoffs, and he thinks I'm not gonna draft him? Get real. He is a two-way forward, so we're gonna have power forward, two-way forward, and a sniper. It could work. Maybe it'll be awful. Maybe they'll light it up. One way to find out. So I have Ovechkin at 37, Pavelski at 38. So someone like Brent Burns, I just can't even look at anymore because he's either going to be 37 or 38. Thank you for having an October birthday, DeBrusque. He is, in fact, 26 years old, 85 overall, and will be joining our second line. Tori Krug is going to play alongside John Carlson. $46 million of cap space. I feel like I gotta start making some better picks here, but maybe not. David Krejci, please actually be 36. And he's 37. You hate to see it. I'll worry about cap space later. Jeff Petrie, get on the team. This will be our 10th selection, so we will officially be halfway through the draft after this. A right-handed defenseman. I think Petrie... I actually have no idea. But nevertheless, we are not in a position to be picky, so Yoki Haru will be joining your Arizona Coyotes. 2.5 million as well. Thank you. All right, this is getting difficult already. Surprisingly, we don't have anybody that is exactly 30. So Nino will be our second line right winger. It's going to be a sniper. I honestly don't remember who else I have on that line. So 
Maybe they're all snipers. The middle is getting very clogged up, but I can still take someone who is 29 and someone who's 31. 34 is officially being removed from the table. Lars Eller, $1 million. What a beautician. The man, the myth, the legend. I don't think we're gonna have to worry about overlapping with that one. Craig, you are joining my team yet again and I could not be more happy to select you. Doomlin is 31, so he's eligible. I'm going to draft him. That leaves us with 29. And then once we get a player there, it's a gap of 24 all the way up to 36. Yep, we're filling in that final position. The 29 year old will be Frank Vitrano. We either have to go old or young now. I don't know why, but I thought Logan Stanley was a lot older than 24, but I am pleasantly surprised to find out that he is not. So that makes him a Arizona Coyote, essentially. I should be able to find someone that's 36. Shouldn't be that difficult, but also famous last words. I'm just gonna do it now. Joe Thornton, get on this team. Patty Horns making 5.3 million. That is outrageous. But I need to draft him. He's 36, a right winger. Get the contract signed. We need two more players, and now the gap goes from age 22 all the way up to 39. Let's go with foot. 76 overall is not the best in the world, but gotta do what you gotta do. He's actually 22. We need one more player, and we are done. Parise is actually 38, which is very unfortunate. Was hoping he's 39. That would have been an easy finish to the draft. And there you have it. Franz Nielsen, 39 years old, going to finish off our squad. Let's go put these lines together. There's our draft overview. Our first line should have great chemistry. I feel like our second line is going to be solid. Defensively, we seem to be... I don't know. I think it's going to heavily depend on how the chemistry goes for the defense, but overall-wise, I'd say we're there. I'm going to need Ovi and Tage to go off. Edit lines, here we go. You know what, Pavelski could be thrown into that mix as well. No, Jabroni, don't even think about it. I am moving Pavelski up. That only gives it a plus three, so maybe he is better off on the second line. You know what? I'm wondering what Pavelski's face-off rating is because it might be better to put Verhage in the middle considering he's center slash left wing. DeBrusque is a left wing and Pavelski is center slash right wing. So he's got 81 versus 75. It is just the second line though. So, you know, maybe not too many face-offs going on. I'm doing it. Get over there, Joey. So our offense looks all right. That fourth line, a little rough around the edges, but you know what? We got the veteran Joe Thornton playing with foot. Maybe he'll help him out. Defensively, okay, 201. I will gladly accept that. And this is everybody I drafted. Petrie's right-handed. So I think it actually worked out. Perfect. What an amazing accident. Not too often you'll hear those two words used together in such a way. And in net, we have Jari backed up by Craig. 87 and 83. You know what? Our team actually looks pretty solid. Power play plus five. Are you kidding me? I'm going to say that Ovi gets the most points. I feel like that first line has potential to go off. Maybe I will adjust it as the year goes on, depending on performance. But I'm going to say that Ovi gets 85 points. I will say that the team gets 43 wins and we make it into the postseason. Simulate up to the trade deadline as you do. And you know what? I am not making any trades. Even if it would help our team, just not going to happen. It's going to be too complex trying to figure out all the different age things. So no, 9-6-0 is a pretty decent start. That's a big win over the Golden Knights, third in the division. So oh, our division's actually very close. Maybe we'll start to see some separation as the year goes on. But right now it does look like it's going to be a really close race to be in a playoff spot. All right, that's it. I'm moving Pavelski up. We just lost a bunch of games in a row. I'm not having it. This is either gonna make or break the team. Just kidding. I don't think it's that dramatic. 33 wins at the trade deadline, perhaps 34, depends how this game against the Jerks goes. Third in the central with a nice amount of points. I like where we're sitting right now. I will simulate this game against the Hurricanes and we take a dub. So that is 34 wins at the trade deadline. I will keep our block and I will enter. I almost skipped it. I've been doing a lot of career sims recently and I just immediately skip it, obviously, because there's no point of me going in there. Almost muscle memory. So we have Slavin here, JT Miller, Seth Jones. There's some good players, but nope. I am happy with our team. Let's keep it going. Slavin and Mata headed to the Colorado Avalanche in exchange for Edvinson, a fourth and a fifth. Interesting. Seth Jones and JT Miller to the New York Islanders in exchange for a lot. Also, 
I wonder if they're ever going to make like a possibility to do three team deals. I mean, I guess they got implemented eventually, right? It's a real thing. It has to be in there. It's just a matter of when. Sweet. Four straight losses. Big win against Chicago, though. We needed that. Still third in the division somehow, even though we're not doing so hot here. Post-trade Deddy. But bringing it back near the end. Nope. Needed that win against the Kraken. Look how much we play Seattle. This is crazy. 9-5 win. All right, we're in. And we have Chicago round one. With 44 wins, we finish third in the Central Division. 91 points on the year. The President's Trophy goes to the Broad Street Bullies. Let's see who they have. Bo Horvat, Bjorkstrand, and Goudreau. Velarde, Mercer, and Mantha. Okay. Spencer Knight and Nett. Kale McCarr? This is crazy. So not only is this team winning President's Trophies now, but they are set. In this universe, the Flyers are going to be a dynasty. A wagon, if you will. We were closer to the middle of the pack than I was expecting, but it was the top 16 teams that qualified. Let's check out who got last place and what their team consists of. Nico Heischer with Hyman and Hartman. Yeah, okay, they have Vasilevsky and Net though. Eh. Ovi well, we had 79 points. We got 75 from Tage and 72 from Joe Pavelski. John Carlson did quite well. He put up 46. That second line not really producing. So maybe I should make a change there. Jari did pretty solid. 271 and then Craig Anderson had a 263. Both of them had winning-ish records. <laughs> Five shutouts for Jari on the year. You see what I see had the most wins with 41 and he had a 913 save percentage. A 922 for Billy Huso. He went off. 239 GAA. Get out me car got 86 points in 82 games played. Yeah, that's good. Believe it or not. Morrissey up there as well. That's cool to see. Dougie Hamilton with 70. The Art Ross Trophy goes to Nathaniel, who has 109 points. Great season for Johnny as well, who put up 107. Looks like the Richard might go to Matthews. Nobody hit 50 this year, eh? Wow, that's crazy. Now let's look at the important stats. Who fought the most? Was it Tanner? No, it was Felino. I don't even see Tanner on here. Lowry had four. Same with Kachuk, Kolasar. Felino had the most pims. That is not surprising, considering how much he fought. Kachuk is right there as well. Same with Tom Wilson, or Tim Winston, if you will. Okay, let's get her going. I'm just gonna breeze past this first round. Are we gonna win it? Maybe. No, doesn't look like it, actually. Oh, no. Yes? No? Well, it was a fun ride. Yeah, once again, I feel like I've had a lot of easy drafts recently, so this was certainly one of the more complex ones. And there you go. The team that put us out goes all the way on to win the Stanley Cup. Tage was point a game in the playoffs. OV, 2-2, two and two, same with DeBrusque. Patty Horns had three points. Let's go. Jari got absolutely obliterated. An 896 save percentage. You're looking like TJ out at Tristan Jari. Coincidence? I think not. John had one point and Tori Krug had two. So our defense were nowhere to be found. Here's the goalie stats for the playoffs. Vladar up at the top. 16 W's, because that's what it takes to win a Stanley Cup, so the math checks out. Dugwell did bits. 23 points in 22 games. Miro did quite well, and we have Brant Clark. Alright, I see you. Wait, there's no way. Dougie had 23 points, and McDavid had 22. The Conn Smythe winner is Dougie Hamilton. That has to be the first simulation in history. That that has happened. Kirby Doc also point a game. I guess, you know, you could put me out there with Connor McDavid and I'll probably be point a game. Nate gets the Art Ross and the Hart. McCarr with the Norris. Johnny Goods takes home the Lady Bing. Beneers with the Calder Memorial. He's gonna be sick. Doug Wise does in fact get the Con Smythe. Billy Husa with the Vesna and the Jennings. Great year for him. The Masterton goes to Bear. Bouillon? I don't even know what I just said. G. Boulon. It, it looks French. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. You know how they teach you in school? Like, sound it out? Yeah, good luck with that one. Barkov gets the Selkie. Nate Mack gets the Lindsay. We already saw that Pappy has the Richard. There is your playoff tree. Chicago only went to seven games once against the Ducks in the conference finals. Pittsburgh also only went to seven once against the Washington Capitals there in round one, and they beat the Capitals. This is giving me flashbacks, because I feel like that happened every single year. It was either them, 
or the Rangers. Anyway, yep, there you go. Thank you for the suggestion. I appreciate it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. We've actually gotten all the way up to 1000% of you watching this video that aren't subscribed. So that's outlandish. If you enjoyed the video, toe drag release that like button. I'll see you soon.